All right, rather than having an entire new uh, sheet about how to do this, I'm going to give you a visual of this one, and I'll print it out when I'm done. Um, a secant and cosecant are reciprocal functions of a cosine and sine. Uh, so if we focus on the cosine technique for graphing, which uh, everything on the cosine page that you did, and you get to the point where you put the dots, the cosine graph, uh, let's just say it's a normal one. Uh, it goes top, zero, bottom, zero, top. Um, the reciprocal uh, function, you know, the tops and the bottoms represent a value of 1 or negative 1 for the sine or cosine function. All right? Uh, the reciprocal of 1 and negative 1 are 1 and negative 1. So the, the tops and the bottoms will be the same for the secant and the cosecant graphs. All right? And the reciprocal of 0 is undefined, so it's an asymptote. So if I'm trying to use cosines setup in order to create secants, top, bottom, top are going to be the same. Zero is changed to asymptote. So top, asymptote, bottom, asymptote, top. And if it's the bow tab, it starts at the bottom. So bottom, zero, top, zero, bottom. Again, the reciprocal of the bottoms are going to be negative ones, certain reciprocal of top one. And if, if, even if it was three, the sine or cosine value was one, reciprocal is still one times the same three, so it's still going to be three. So it's not going to be like three changes to a third. That just wherever the top is, is the same top, and the bottom is the same bottom. The zeros change to asymptotes, so bottom, asymptote, top, asymptote, bottom is the secant. So if I was just graphing, for example, a, a cosine graph, just to give you an idea. So this is the top, then zero, and then bottom, and then zero, and then top. So that's what cosine looks like. And I wanted to graph secant off of that. What happens is everywhere there is a zero, there's an asymptote. And then if you look at the cosine graph itself, it hits its highest point here, then it gets smaller, which means its reciprocal is going to get bigger. So the, and I'm going to use black here to graph it. Um, this is the bottom point it hits. It's going to be like that. And this is the bottom point it hits. So it goes like that. And that's the top point it hits, so it goes like that. That's what the secant graph looks like. All right? And the same deal, if it had it started at the bottom, it would be the same picture. This would just be down, this would be up, and this would be down. So that's how, how to deal with that. Uh, sine of x, same deal. Uh, sine of x starts at 0. It either goes up, back to 0, down, back to 0. Or it starts at 0, goes down, back to 0, goes up, back to 0. Again, the reciprocal of zero is going to be an asymptote. The tops and bottoms are the same tops and bottoms. So for cosecant, we're going to start at an asymptote top, back to asymptote bottom, back to asymptote, and asymptote bottom. So a taba or a bata instead of a tobo and a boto. All right. So I really hope these words don't mean anything bad in a foreign language, but I don't know. They, they, they sound. They sound like foreign language to me, though. So anyway, uh, so if I'm graphing a sine, but just a basic, let's go with the Otobo. So start at zero to the top, back to zero to the bottom, back to zero. So our normal sine curve looks like this. And I wanted to graph a cosecant curve. Oops. The asymptotes happen at the zero. So asymptote here, asymptote here, asymptote here. And then that's the bottom of the cosecant graph. It stays within the asymptotes. So, all right, so the black in, in both of these represent the secant and the cosecant graph. You don't have to draw the sine or cosine graph. Just put the dots where they belong. And then if you, instead of you put the dots where you would put for a sign, and then just don't draw the curve. Put the asymptotes where the zeros are and just make the secant and cosecant curve like you're supposed to. Uh, a lot of times in the book, they, they actually draw the sine and cosine graph. Not necessary. Okay, the actual secant graph is the black. The cosecant graph is the black. So that's how to do that. I'll, you know, I'll print that out when I'm done with all this. So Example of uh, 4, page 524 is what page it comes on. I don't know why I put that there. But, um, uh, graph y equals 2 cosecant of pi x over 2. So if I am uh, see cosecant, I need, 
need to go immediately to sign, right? I can see that B's value is equal to positive 2, which if I'm doing sign, that means we go up first. So I'm, I've got this in mind, right? But again, I'm doing cosecant, so instead of putting zeros, I'm going to have half notes, all right? So I've got B is 2. I know that uh, the amplitude is 2 if it's sine. Okay, it's not really called amplitude with um, C and cosine, but it, it's something we're, we're familiar with, so we'll go ahead and refer to it as that. All that tells me is I'm going to go 2 up, 2 down on the y-axis at 0. All right, and then um, cosecant of pi x over 2, so what's in front of x is pi over 2, so C is equal to pi over 2, which means that the period is 2 pi divided by pi over 2, which is just 2 pi times 2 over pi. So strike the pi's out, multiply, you get 4. We've done our four dashes here, right? So 4 divided by 4 is 1, so x is going to be going to 1 scale. Again, 1 scale or 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever you want to do, it's fine. All right, once you get everything set up properly, then um, I need to do asymptote. Asymptote at there, and then goes to the top point, which is here, and then goes to asymptote again, and goes to a bottom point down here, and finally goes to an asymptote again. So again, instead of drawing the writing the zeros in there, just draw asymptotes, and then top is top, bottom is bottom, and then I'm going to fit the curve inside the asymptotes, making sure that this is the bottom point. Fit the curve inside the asymptote, making sure that's the top point. And I can probably do better than that. There we go. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, you know, get it looking pretty much right. But that's what secant and cosecant graphs tend to look like. Dot going up, dot going down between asymptotes. Uh, cosecant's first asymptote is at zero, where secant's first asymptote is going to be the first. First dash.